Hello and welcome. I am going to be doing a little talk on uh, B cells and CD4 cells or T helper cells and how they come in to be activated and activate each other because it can be a little bit confusing with who stimulates who and what activates what. So I thought I'd just try and simplify a little bit of it. So let's get started. So we have our antigen presenting cell here, which could be a macrophage or a dendritic cell, or um, even even some other sort of um, antigen presenting cell, which, as I will explain, can actually be a B cell. Now, it will find a T cell. It will migrate to lymphoidal tissues, so it will end up in the lymph nodes or something, and it will interact with the CD4 cell here, and it will find one which will recognise its its antigen that is presenting. Now remember the antigen here is part of a pathogen or even an intracellular um, part of an intracellular protein or something like that of an infected cell which has been processed in the antigen presenting cell uh, and has been displayed. Now the important thing is, is that it is displayed on a major histone compatibility 2 molecule. And this is very important that it's MHC2 because this is what the CD4 or T helper cell, just so we're on the same page, will recognize. So the T helper cell will recognize the antigen on its T cell receptor. And if the molecules fit and they arrange, then we're good to go. These will then connect and there will be a stimulus. Now, I mentioned that it has to be the MHC2, and that is because where the T helper cell gets its CD4 name from is because it expresses a CD4 protein which recognizes the MHC class 2. This will then trigger a first stimulus. This is the first port of call for everything, and there will actually be an intracellular cascade that will, that will start, and this is through the action of CD3 proteins that are uh, intracellular and this will go on to to start to activate the T cell. However, this is not enough by itself. There needs to be further stimulus and this is to avoid unwanted activation of the T cells. And the way that this occurs is there's a few um, proteins that are involved, but these are the main ones that, um, that really need to be talked about. So the antigen presenting cell will express a protein called B71 and you also get B712. And this will be recognized by a protein receptor called CD28, which is found on the, on the T helper cell. And when these two come into contact, there is a secondary, oops, not working. There's a secondary stimulus here secondary stimulus and this is very important uh, for this to occur because if there is not this connection with the B7 protein and the CD28 then this will not influence the intracellular cascade that is going on to affect the DNA and such like that and cause upregulation of certain proteins and interleukins for the T cell to differentiate and proliferate. Now Another important thing that should be mentioned is that when these go down and work on the DNA, this will then start to express interleukin-2. And at the same time, the T cell will also produce an interleukin-2 receptor. And it actually causes auto, uh, uh, auto stimulates. So it's an autocrine reaction. And this will further promote and develop the T cell to become activated. Okay, so we very briefly went over the fact that an antigen presenting cell turns up. It has to be displaying the right type of antigen on the right type of protein, which can be recognized by the T receptor and the CD4. There then needs to be co stimulation, that's the co stimulation. Of other proteins, namely B71 or 2, which is picked up by CD28 receptor, 
and also then the cell the T cell will then start to produce interleukin 2 which will self um, self stimulate now what does the T cell go on to do then well as you may remember the T cell is going to have two effects they will activate B cells which will be the humoral response and they can also differentiate and carry out the cell mediated response so two pathways will happen from the activation of the CD4. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is happening at the humoral response because it's kind of self-explanatory what happens here is that the, C the CD4s will differentiate and activate, um, further activate natural killer cells and uh, cytotoxic T cells which will enter systemic circulation to go fight the pathogen uh, there and eradicate the pathogen appropriately. But what about the humoral response where it activates B cells? Well, I've done a little diagram here and I'm going to talk through this. And what I want you to do is I want you to just kind of ignore this just now. Ignore this side because this is um, the, where the B cell actually comes into contact with the antigen first. What we'll talk about is what ha what has happened here. We've already seen this. This has occurred. Um, this, this has all occurred further up that we had talked about and you've had some of the, the T cells disappear into the systemic circulation. But some of them stay in the, lymph, uh, in the lymph nodes and they proliferate and they migrate. Now, normally T cells are found in the paracortical area and this is because they're continually secreting something called the CCR7 protein. And this promotes T cells to stay in this area. It keeps them around here. But when they're activated, they actually stop secreting this. They, they start inhibiting this. And what they then start to secrete is something called CXCR5. Now, what this does is this actually promotes migration, promotes the migration of the T cells. And it promotes the migration of the T cells towards lymphoidal tissue. And the lymphoidal tissue is where the B cells are. Now, then what the T cell has to do is it has to come into contact with a B cell, which recognizes the antigen that it is now displaying, the antigen that it is uh, being stimulated by. And this is actually quite an amazing feat for this to occur. I mean, just for the antigen presenting cell to find the CD4 cell is quite amazing. But then for this T cell to then go on to find the right B cell, because there's hundreds of millions of these passing through. And this is where these regulate, where these um, proteins, these chemotactic proteins come into play and are very important is because they will drive the T cells into the B cell area and promote the migration. And this will, this will further encourage or increase the chances of that T cell meeting that particular B cell. Now, on this, I've I've noted that this has interacted with um, what I've what I've actually drawn here is a major histone compatibility molecule. But if the T cell is activating the B cell, it actually activate via the the antibody. Um, yeah, it will be the antibody that recognizes the antigen. So it's the other way around. And I'll quickly talk about what happens when when the T cell activates the B cell. Is the the B cell it then recognizes, it would actually occur here, ignore this picture, ignore all this just now. What would happen is the B cell would recognize this being displayed by the T cell, okay, this antigen. This would then cause the B cell to start upregulating a particular protein, and it would upregulate a protein called CD4, uh, a receptor, sorry, it's called CD40. And then what the T cell would do is the T cell would then stimulate something called CD40 ligand, which would bind to it. And this will promote, this will activate the B cell. It will become activated and ready. And it will start to proliferate and differentiate uh, and, and also um, differentiates the T cell will then also give off particular growth factors namely interleukin 4 which drives proliferation and interferon gamma 
which will be picked up by the T-cell. And these are important because not only are they driving the proliferation, but they're also promoting the heavy chain, the heavy chain isotype switching of the antibodies. Uh, I just trying to, uh, switching, sorry, getting a bit confused there. Because if you remember, the anti the B cells display A and D. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a complete lie to you. They don't sp they express M and D antibodies, and these then need to change into uh, the their other times into their other antibodies through the heavy chain isotyping, which would then move to IgG. Uh, uh, I G E and I G A. I think that's yes, that's the order that they go in. And so, to promote this differentiation, is due to the expression of these. And then, of course, when the B cell gets activated, it will move in to become uh, plasma cells. Plasma cells. So they will continue to produce these antibodies, and then they will also move in to become memory cells, the ones that will remain in your system and launch uh, a humoral response much quicker if exposed to the same antigen. Now, what happens if the B cell is the one that comes into contact with the antigen first? And this can actually be quite common because B cells are very good at coming into contact with the antigens. They, they can pick up even low even in low concentrations in the serum of the antigen, the B cells are very good at picking it up. And this is what occurs here, is that the B cell has recognized it and it starts to become activated. And it's a very, it's just the opposite to what happens over this side, is that B cells are usually excreting C, 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 X, C, R5, and then they start to inhibit that, and then they start to secrete CCR7 and this promotes their migration their migration out and also the CCR7 then gets caught into the T cells and the T cells start to migrate as well because they are attracted to this and eventually they will bump in and the same interaction occurs but this time what the B cell does is instead of just keeping the the antigen on the um, on the um, antibody, it will actually essentially become a type of antigen presenting cell because it will display the antigen on a major histone compatibility too. And then the exact same thing has occurred is that it will go up to the T cell and the T cell will recognise on its T cell receptor, and then it will have its B, uh, it, it's CD28, which will recognize the major histone, sorry, I'm talking absolute rubbish, the, the CD4, which will recognize the MHC class 2, and then the B cell will start to promote B71 or 2, and that will be recognized by the CD28, and then the activation of the B cell will then occur um, through through the activation of the T cell because what has now happened is the T cells become activated and then we get that whole stimulus again that we were talking about where the 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 um, T cell will then promote CD4 to become to come on CD40 and then we'll start producing uh, the CD4 ligands which will stimulate that and then that will really switch on the B cell, that will cause proliferation. And then also you'll get the the interleukins, interleukins 4 and T uh, IF, oh, sorry, interferon gamma being stimulated to release, to activate the B cells. So essentially if the B cell is the first one to, to be stimulated, then it has to go find the T cell, stimulate the T cell, so it can then uh, re-stimulate the B cell and then cause differentiation. And then of course this T cell that's activated has already activated the B cells, so it then just moves on to its cell uh, mediated response. So I hope 
that just makes a little bit more sense to what's happening. You know, it explains a little bit about why some of the T cells remain in the in the lymph nodes and in lymphoidal organs, and how they migrate and promote the movement of B cells through these expressions of CX, CR5, and CCR7, and then how they interact, and how if the T cell is the one that's activated first, all it needs to do is switch on the B cell, and if the B cell is the one that's activated first, it has to switch on the T cell so that it can then be re-switched, and then itself switched on. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.